basically uh, will focus on the basis for design and then start defining the shear forces for the structure, the shear forces that are then distributed to the walls and from the walls to the piers. So, this um, process is what we are going to be um, examining here on both for single storied and for multi storied structures. However, this, this design <coughs> is within the framework of um, earthquake resistant design. So, it is not um, it is not going to be gravity design alone, but um, the framework is uh, designed for designed for a combination of earthquake force and uh, gravity and uh, gravity forces which is dead plus live load. So, we are basically looking at arriving at a um, arriving at a distribution of demand axial forces bending moments and shear forces for a combination of earthquake load, dead load and imposed load or the live load itself. So, the starting point is again as far as uh, the seismic design is concerned. You have the uh, design configuration, the plan configuration that you have arrived at and we have to choose the type of system that we want to actually design which then leads us to what sort of a response reduction factor can you use in the design and arrive at the horizontal seismic coefficient which then determines what is the total base shear that the structure is going to be designed for. So, I am revisiting the um, response reduction factor and what this response reduction factor is basically standing for. Um, I recollect that we have talked about the different values of the response reduction factor that are prescribed for reinforced masonry and uh, type A, type B and type C walls as you remember. As you will remember the first one is again uh, governed by 1905 design it is governed by the um, while all the three uh, are still in the allowable stresses design the first one type A wall is governed by 1905 design and uh, and that is why you um, you are allowed to design such structures only in seismic zones 2 and 3 and the minimum reinforcement requirement is anyway provided. So, here the design is going to be as per, as per 1905 which is the code for unreinforced masonry as a structural solution. Uh, B and C we are allowed to go to R factors of 3 and a maximum of 4 for type C wall which is with special reinforcement what we call special reinforcement we just looked at the percentage of reinforcement which is about 0.2 percent combination of horizontal plus vertical and minimum of 0.07 percent in any direction. So, uh, uh, if you are looking at R factors of 3 or 4 what is what is really what is really uh, what this R factor is doing. So, this R factor is a combination of effects that are considered in the overall structural behavior. So, if you were to look at um, in this graph the uh, red line that you see is really the uh, it is really the overall lateral force design of the structure uh, uh, overall lateral force response of the structure. So, uh, you have lateral force on the y axis and the roof displacement it is a, a control node that is being considered at the top of the structure and we are looking at how this structure behaves as the lateral force increases and finally, uh, there is failure in the structure by the mechanism uh, by any mechanism that uh, is formed leading to its uh, ultimate behavior. So, if you look at the red line which is really the actual behavior of the structure we are then looking at certain uh, important points on this force displacement behavior which uh, gives us the basis for the definition of the R factor. So, if you are looking at a, st a structure and based on its initial elastic stiffness which is the initial line uh, the dotted line that is there along the initial curve of the structure that helps us determine what is the total elastic force that the structure is to be designed for. So, your elastic force F elastic is uh, is determined, but then you do not design for the elastic force considering the fact that the structure cannot take the elastic force 
completely but starts deforming and getting damaged significantly before the uh, behavior of damage formation that you observe in a given typology of structure needs to be accounted for and therefore f elastic is not something that you would design for you will have to estimate what you should be designing for. So to be able to arrive at what you should be designing for you, once we have defined f elastic we need to go and define what is this yield force uh, at which the structure starts showing significant deviation from elastic behavior and that is your second stage f y. Now unlike um, metal structures again when you are looking at metal structures it is an it is an assembly of several elements it is not a single uh, metal element it is not a single uh, bar in steel that you are looking at it is an it is an assembly of several metal structures even there it is not going to be a marked uh, point as far as the yield of the structure is concerned. So defining what is the force corresponding to the yielding of the structure is not something that can be uh, defined objectively there is a certain amount of um, difference depending on the approach one would adopt in defining the yield force and typically what is done is you have a nonlinear curve which is the red curve here is a nonlinear curve um, and to define a point which is the yield force in the nonlinear curve is not straightforward. So what is typically done is that this nonlinear curve is then converted into an equivalent bilinear curve with or without hardening and uh, there are prescribed procedures for example equal area approach is one of the procedures to arrive at uh, iteratively a value of yield force as far as the behavior of the structure is concerned. Um, it could also be if you have uh, reinforced concrete structures uh, or even steel structures prescriptions are you look at the first yield uh, at the, the force at which the first element starts yielding in the structure. But then as I said there are different ways in which that is approached. So let us say that using an analytical approach or using some specific prescription such as first yield you arrive at the yield force of the structure then this ratio between the elastic force and the yield force of the structure is the ductile behavior owing to ductility in the behavior that is the structure is now uh, yielding and the displacements in the structure are going to be significantly larger from that point onwards and therefore this ratio of the ultimate displacement of the structure delta u to yield displacement of the structure ultimate displacement to the yield displacement is the displacement ductility of the structure. So the first parameter which is due to ductility f elastic by f y is capturing that phenomenon of the ductility available in the structure. So that is where you have the first contributory factor we uh, designate ductility with the factor mu displacement ductility is what we are basically referring to where this displacement ductility of the structure is nothing but because it is now going on uh, almost horizontal the ratio of delta u to delta y. So reflecting delta u to delta y using this r mu we are really talking of this ratio f elastic to f y. So that is the first part then you also have over strength so you expect a certain material uh, to yield at a, uh, a specific value which is what uh, on an average that material should yield but depending on manufacturing processes depending on existing defects depending on uh, the fact that materials will have variability material will have an over strength and will not necessarily uh, yield at that particular value exactly and therefore there is an over strength uh, factor that needs to be accounted for and that ratio is brought in by this f y by f s. Now this f y by f s is a value that is greater than 1 and depending on the type of material we are looking at would be able to one would be able to arrive at what is the correct over strength factor that you should be using for a given typology. How much should I use for reinforced concrete? How much should I use for steel? For steel these values are 
uh, much lesser because it is a material which is not affected so much by va uh, variability, but for materials like masonry and concrete uh, F y by F s is uh, a significant number and cannot be neglected. That is taken care of by the second factor R uh, omega here which is actually due to the over strength. So, F y by F s is that uh, element that comes in and the third one is the design approach that we are taking. So, if we were designing for strength, if we were, if we were adopting limit state design and doing ultimate strength um, design, designing at um, uh, a limit state defined by ultimate behavior, then we would have actually stopped at F s. If we were doing uh, strength design, we should have said F s is our design force. However, in this particular case, we are using the allowable stress approach and therefore, F s is not what we would be de designing for. We use a factor of safety to further bring down the design force and therefore, the third component of response reduction that we are bringing in is due to the allowable stress, uh, allowable stress approach and that is your uh, R y that is sitting here. So, F s by F design would define what that factor itself is. Uh, a simple analogy here is when we were looking at compressive strength of masonry right using a prism uh, test we then looked at the uh, basic compressive stress which was 25 percent of that compressive strength from a prism test we were bringing in a factor of safety of 4 this is analogous to such a such a uh, situation where i know that the material is going to yield at a certain value or fail at a certain value but I do not want to design it at that level, I already re reduce it for over strength and then further reduce it for a factor of safety and that is what is reflected here um, as F s divided by F design. So, our, uh, our omega is taking care of uh, the over strength. So, you are lo really looking at F s by um, sorry F y by F y by F s, you are then looking at um, R y which is your F s divided by F design which is the design force under the working stress approach that you are uh, that you are adopting. Now, these put together the over strength uh, factor, the ductility factor and the uh, allowable stress design factor together is what we refer to as the behavior factor right. So, it is a word the R is really a um, it is a conglomeration of several uh, phenomena and it is called the response reduction factor because exactly what it is doing is reducing the response for us as far as design is concerned. But in um, earthquake engineering literature, this is referred to as the behavior factor. So, the structural behavior under an earthquake is basically governed by these three uh, primary aspects as far as your design forces are concerned. If you want to bring in any allowable stress design, you bring in R y, but you have to anyway consider over strength factor and ductility factor. So, that is our starting point. So, with an appreciation of what R factor should you use, we then go and define depending on the zone we are sitting in what the design seismic coefficient is. Now, uh, adopting the design seismic coefficient uh, implies we are also choosing the design force for which we are designing and that is what we see uh, the design basis earthquake being z by 2 which is the zone factor by 2 um, multiplied by the factor that tells you what is the demand level depending on the period of vibration of the structure which is S a by g divided by the response reduction factor, but this has to be qualified again depending on the importance factor of the structure. So, this is our starting point as far as the overall system design forces are concerned. A h is established and then the shear force from A h, the base shear force from A h needs to be now distributed. So, we will look at that in the uh, next uh, lecture where we go from system level design up to the peer shear forces uh, within a given wall. Thank you.